Do you know how to pass the Praxis 5005 Elementary Education Multiple Subject Science Subtest? Whew, that's a mouthful. But when you're studying for these tests, it's important to be specific about what you're studying and what resources you're using. So I want to ask you, do you know how to pass that 5005 science subtest? Do you know the important concepts that are going to be on the test that you have to be prepared for? If you don't, you've come to the right place because in this video, I'm gonna break down all the big concepts on the 5005 so you know exactly what's gonna be on the test and what you need to study. How do I know? Well, my name's Scott Roselle and I'm the founder and president of 240 Tutoring and we have the best study guides for the Praxis out there, bar none. And to create these best study guides, we had to examine and study the test to know exactly what's gonna be on there so we could curate the best study guide possible to maximize every minute of our customer's time studying. And in this video, I'm gonna break down those testing secrets we discovered so you can be prepared too. And the best part is, this video is free. So keep watching. So on the Praxis 5005, you'll have 50 minutes to complete the 55 selected response questions. And a selected response question is really just a multiple choice question that could take a few different forms. Most of the time, you'll just select one of the answer options out of the four available. On a few questions, you'll select multiple answer options. And then on some, you might have to fill in the blank with what the answer is. So now you know how the test is gonna be delivered. There's three big sections on the test that you need to prepare for. Earth science, life science, and physical science. So we're gonna look at each of those sections and the big concepts within each section. So let's start with earth science. And the three big concepts in the earth science section is earth systems, earth cycles, and space. So for earth systems, it's really understanding the different systems that take place on the earth. And by systems, I don't mean like an engine or a machine, but I really mean the different layers of the earth, the different crust, the idea of plate tectonics, what weathering and erosion is, and how that forms the rocks on this earth. So Earth Systems is really about understanding the different components of the Earth, how they work within themselves, and kind of how they interact with each other. So important concepts in addition to the three kinds of rock, plate tectonics, and the crust of the Earth, you're going to need to know the following. Weathering, erosion, volcanoes, earthquakes, what currents are, what waves are, what tides are. You need to know about the water cycle, the clouds, and climate and weather. So related to the concept of Earth Systems is really Earth Cycles. And Earth cycles is this specific repeated processes that take place on the Earth. And we divide them up because Earth cycles really deals with a few specific ones. And those specific cycles is really the rock cycle, the water cycle, the carbon cycle, and the nitrogen cycle. And the final big concept is space. Now for space, you need to know things like the planets, the order of the planets, what an asteroid is, what a meteor is. But one concept that is specifically going to come up under this space is the idea of the lunar cycle. Now, the lunar cycle just refers to the relative position of the sun, the earth, and the moon, and how the different positions create different circumstances on earth. So, as the moon revolves around the earth, it has a different relative position to the sun, which affects how much of the moon is visible to people on earth at specific areas, but it also impacts things like tides and the lunar cycle can mark seasons as well. So the lunar cycle is very popular and it will appear on the test. That's the biggest takeaway from space is understanding the lunar cycle. Now, I wanna go back and talk about a few specific things that are gonna be on here that I mentioned previously but didn't elaborate on. The first one is the water cycle. So this is a specific cycle on Earth that really describes how water goes from the oceans, is evaporated into the atmosphere, combines into rain, falls down onto the earth, and then eventually goes back into the ocean. The water cycle is very important and it's foundational to life on earth. And because it's so important to life on earth, it's gonna come up on the test, much like the lunar cycle. So as you're researching the water cycles, pay specific attention to these terms. Evaporation, condensation, humidity, precipitation, and surface runoff. And the other specific concept in earth systems is soil formation and composition. Soil formation occurs in the weathering and the erosion cycles. And soil formation really encompasses the five aspects of soil, which are minerals, organic material, the living organisms in the soil, water and air, and then nutrients. So make sure you know each one of those components and how it relates in the soil and the composition. And the last specific thing I wanted to touch on is under earth systems, and it's the layers of the earth. You see, the earth is really divided into four areas, the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. You see, the crust is a cool, hard outer core, which we know of, that's what we live on, and it floats on top of the cores underneath it. So the crust really sits on top of the mantle, 
And this is hot, but it's not hot enough to actually melt the rock. That's what lava is, by the way, melted rock. It doesn't actually melt the rock, so it's kind of like Play-Doh. So, so it can move and it's malleable, but it moves very, very slowly. The outer core is a super hot liquid rock, and then the inner core is mainly made up of iron and nickel, so we think, and while it is so hot, it's liquid, all the pressure pushing down on it condenses it into a solid state. So that makes up all the big concepts in earth science, and if that seems like a lot, it's because it is. The earth is a very complex structure, and there's a lot to know about it, and there's a lot to teach young students about, so that's why the test covers so much information. If it seems like too much information, or you don't know how you're gonna study all that, or you're not exactly sure what you should know and how much you should study and at what level you should really learn the material, then I'd recommend getting a 240 tutoring study guide. We're gonna have all the material lined up for you, nicely curated in the exact manner in depth in which you need to know it to pass the test. Oh, and we have wonderful and hundreds authentic, realistic practice questions, so you can see exactly what kind of questions you're gonna see on the test. So let's look at the next section, life science. And the four big concepts in life science is ecology, living systems, reproduction, heredity and change, and personal health. So the first big concept in this section is living systems. And this is really just understanding the structure of living thing. And by structure, I mean characteristics, like the parts of a cell, what makes up a cell, and how that contributes to the function of life. So when you're studying living systems, make sure you're familiar with these terms, photosynthesis, respiration, transpiration, and the transport of water and solids. Now, the next big concept to know is reproduction, heredity, and change. So a big part of life science is understanding how living things reproduce and kind of the rules governing that reproduction. So in regards to reproduction, her heredity, and change, you're really gonna wanna know about DNA and genetics. And when you look at genetics, make sure you know terms like dominant and recessive gene, chromosome, what a Punnett square is, and really what DNA is. And finally, for reproduction, heredity, and change, it also includes the development. So you need to know about specific life cycles, how adaptation works, and generally how organisms change and evolve over time, both within the life cycle and then over the course of hundreds, if not thousands of years. Now, the next big concept under life science is ecology. And ecology really refers to living things regulation and behavior. So the terms stimuli and homeostasis are very important under this concept of ecology. In addition to the terms stimuli and homeostasis, make sure you know the terms eukaryotic, prokaryotic, and the major groups of eukaryotic organisms. Ecology also looks at how living things interact with each other within their environment. So, it, under ecology are things called ecosystems, and those have food chains and then food webs. A food chain is the order of yeah, decomposers on bottom, and then it kind of goes up and different organisms are in different parts of the food chain. And a food web is how all the members of the food chain interact and depend upon each other. It's kind of like a big balancing scale, or a web. And then the last big concept for life science is really personal health. And this is all about understanding the difference between a healthy lifestyle and an unhealthy lifestyle. So make sure you understand things regarding nutrition, exercise, and generally how personal health works, germs and diseases, and how those interact and can be combated with common things like hygiene and vaccinations. Now, while those are the big concepts under life science, I wanna look at a few specific concepts to really give you some concrete examples of things you have to know. The first is to fundamentally understand the difference between living things and non-living things. Now, here are the traits of living things. Now, non-living things might have some of these traits, but they won't have all of them. A living thing will have all these traits. A living thing uses energy, has movement, has breathing, gets rid of waste, it grows and develops, it responds to its environment, and it reproduces. Now, as I said, some non-living things might share some of those characteristics, but living things will have all seven of those. Now, the next big concept knows photosynthesis, and this is really just how a plant takes light from the sun and converts it into energy. Next, know the difference between habitat and niche. Habitat is a geographic area where an organism lives, and a niche is how that organism lives within the habitat. And so when looking at a niche, you really look at these three things. Physical factors like sunlight, soil composition, temperature, and humidity. Biological factors like the competitors for that organism, parasites, prey, and then behavioral patterns like movement and social organization. And finally, under life science, I talked about knowing life cycles. Now there's two life cycles that you're really gonna wanna know on the test. The first one is the butterfly life cycle, and the next one is the frog life cycle. So you need to know how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly and a tadpole turns into a frog. Out of all the life cycles, those two are probably the only ones I've seen come up on these exams. They're the 
best, most diverse example of a life cycle. So it's very important to know those two specifically. Now, the last big section on the Praxis 5005 Elementary Education Multiple Subject Science Test is physical science. And physical science is really gonna test your knowledge about non-living things. So things like chemistry, physics, and astronomy. Now, the three big concepts to know for physical science is matter, force and motion, and energy and transformation. So let's look at matter. Matter is basically any and everything that has mass and takes up space. So when you're studying matter, make sure you're familiar with these things. The physical properties of matter, the conservation of matter, physical and chemical changes of matter, mixtures and solutions, atoms and elements, and molecules and compounds. If you're pretty comfortable with all those terms and how they relate to matter, you should be, do fine on questions relating to matter. And if you have any questions, just email scott at 242 and say, what's the matter? And I'll be happy to answer any matters relating to the matter of matter. Now, the next big concept to know is really force and motion. Now, for force and motion, this is really gonna all boil down to Newtonian physics and understanding Newton's three laws of motion. Now, while I could take a stab at it, there's much better resources out there to learn about Newton's three laws of motions with specific examples than just me telling you that. So I would highly recommend going and exploring those resources for yourself. Or we had experts break down exactly what you need to know about force and motion in our 240 tutoring study guides. So if you don't want to trust yourself to go make sure and hope and fingers crossed that you have everything you need to know for the test, just use a 240 tutoring study guide knowing that experts have studied the test and given you the exact information you need to know backed by authentic, realistic practice questions. Now, the last big concept for the test has everything to do with energy. Energy is just really the ability to do work or apply force over a distance. But you need to know that energy is never created or destroyed, it only transforms states. Not only is it never created or destroyed, it can take a lot of different forms. And by forms, I mean things like chemical energy, heat energy, light energy, nuclear energy. There's all sorts of forms of energy, and it's important to know the different characteristics of each one. Now, a good specific concept to know is the difference between potential and kinetic energy. And a good example of this is potential energy is stored energy. Kinetic energy is used energy. So if you think of a rock on top of a hill, when it's just sitting there at the very top of the hill, that's potential energy. It has a potential to go down the mountain and create a lot of energy. When it's going down the mountain, that's kinetic energy. That's used or current expended energy. Speaking of energy, make sure you know the different kinds of waves. And when I say the different kinds of waves, I'm really talking about things like sound waves, light waves, infrared waves, radio waves, X-rays, gamma rays. And once you're done with the waves, make sure you look at heat and you understand the difference between heat and temperature and how heat is transferred between objects through conduction, convection, radiation. And that's the big things to know for physical science. And again, I'm gonna tell you a lot of this stuff you might be able to research on your own, but with such a big test, you really wanna risk thinking that you're prepared when you may not be. And that's really why I created 242 Tutoring Study Guide so teachers like you don't have the stress of their entire career hinging upon one test and not being certain that they're prepared or they've studied the exact things they need to. So don't risk your career on a test. Make sure you get the proper preparation knowing the exact concepts that you're studying are the exact concepts you need to know. In the description below is a link to our study guide. You can check it out. It's got a 48 hour, no questions asked refund guarantee, which means that you can try the study guide out risk free. You can look at all of our practice questions, our instructional content, our flashcards, and be confident that you're getting the best preparation possible. And now let's take a look at a few practice questions so you can have an idea about how the concepts we've talked about in this video are reflected on the test. Now these are practice questions coming straight from our 242 tutoring study guide. Question one, the tilt of the earth, A causes seasons, B causes the tides, C causes gravitational attraction, or D causes magnetic fields. Now during these practice questions, I would recommend pausing the video, working through it, and trying to answer it the best you can. Just don't skip forward to the answer. Really take this as an opportunity to learn and diagnose yourself of how well you're answering the questions. The correct answer for question one is A. The Earth's tilt on its axis causes the four different seasons. Earth's atmosphere is mainly composed of oxygen. And which of the following elements? A, nitrogen, B, carbon dioxide, C, hydrogen, D, helium. The correct answer is A. The main component of Earth's atmosphere are oxygen and nitrogen. It's also composed of small amounts of carbon dioxide, argon, and very small amounts of other gases. Question three. 
While Susan is viewing cells under a compound microscope, she notices that the cells do not appear to have any specialized organelles. These cells are most likely which of the following? A, animal cells, B, plant cells, C, eukaryotic cells, D, prokaryotic cells. Correct answer is D. Prokaryotic cells do not contain specialized membrane-bound organelles. And examples are like bacteria, blue-green algae, and other primitive microorganisms. Question four. Kim bought some fireworks to shoot off for the 4th of July. She noticed several different powders mixed together in the tube. As the chemicals were ignited, what evidence did she observe that would indicate a chemical reaction had occurred? A change in color? B, the chemicals breaking up in the atmosphere? C, an explosion at different heights? D, a change in the state from a liquid state to a solid? The correct answer is A. There are indicators that show a chemical reaction has occurred. Bubbles, a change in temperature, which is the release of absorption of energy, a color change, and a production of precipitates, a formation of a solid. Question five, Peter had to ask his neighbors for help when he was moving because he needed help pushing his piano up the ramp of a moving truck. Peter could not move the piano without help because of the piano's mass. This situation relates to which of the following Newton's laws? A, Newton's first law, B, Newton's second law, C, Newton's third law, D, Newton's fourth law. The correct answer is B. Newton's second law states that the force needed to move an object is related to the mass of an object. Heavier objects require more force to move them. In this scenario, Peter can't move the piano by himself because he doesn't have enough strength to create a large enough force. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it and you wanna see more, just hit the subscribe button below. It helps us keep creating wonderful videos like this for future teachers like you. And if this video helped you pass the test, leave a comment below. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. We read each one and we respond to each one. We wanna hear from you, so please leave a comment. Now, if you're studying for other subtests like the English, math, or the social science, we have videos on those too. You should be seeing it in the recommended video or you can go to our channel and search for the video.